lagged way of doing it here. And what it's saying is, what if from early to mid to late, the government budget turns more into surplus? That should cause a recession. And that's what you get in the first one. That my my, my uh, things after the slash are the lagged uh, uh, test. What about the second one? It went from a deficit of 45, what, billion? Yeah, 45 billion, 2009 dollars to a surplus. I'll bet that caused a recession. Yep, there's the recession next. Uh, and here, look, now again, it's mixing together the automatic and the discretionary, but I was trying to be fair. If I was one of these people and I was doing this test, and I'm not, so I was like, okay, what if, if, if you know, what would be fair to them? Uh, and that one worked every single time. That if you say, okay, well, what if the budget turns more towards surplus? Does that cause a recession? Uh, and that worked. All right, so uh, that's what I did for that one. But again, it's essentially a really big problem to try to figure out how do I separate out the, uh, oh, well, did I give you that sheet of paper already? I did, yeah, that's right. So uh, that's it for this test. All right, now for the next test, you're also going to do Michael Koleski. Now, Michael Koleski essentially agrees with everything that Keynes said. So I just added one more thing. I just sort of picked out, okay, one more variable. He thought that as the expansion went on, firms were taking on greater and greater risk because their debts were going to rise relative to their income. And so I tried to find a measure of risk, uh, and I did, and it sucks. It doesn't work at all. Uh, so no, no offense to Koleski, because he also believed that the other stuff uh, that Keynes said was right. Hyman Minsky is going to basically believe what Keynes said and then say, ah, but there's also another factor. People are going to be going increasingly into debt uh, from early to mid to late, which is going to cause the financial system to be much more fragile, uh, and thereby potentially, when, if there is a downturn that, that uh, occurs, going to cause an even bigger one because people's leverage ratios were so high. And then finally, oh man, this is the last one we do, and yet it's from 1913. Wesley Clare Mitchell wrote this massive volume on business cycles. It's available free online uh, if you're willing to sit and read 900 pages. But he, honestly, I thought in many ways had the best theory of anybody. Um, and he said, look, in late expansion, raw material prices go up. The cost of building physical capital goes up and labor costs go up. And these essentially start to squeeze profits to the point that bankers start to get scared. And they say, uh-oh, you're not going to pay me back. Uh, and so they start renegotiating terms, and, and he said that very quickly, everyone cares about the bottom line and not, to go, not going bankrupt, and it switches back the other direction. We'll go over that one later. But uh, anyway, that's it for this test, for the test stuff. Now let me show you online here where all this is available. Here is the web page oops, for our class. And I updated a bunch of stuff just the last few days because as I've told you before, I've been doing a bunch of revisions on this course. Uh, we've already, you know what the study questions are. We've already done this document here, last class period, where we went through the description of every business cycle. I emailed you last night that I updated this summary page uh, that you need to know for the exam. I simplified it again. I went through another, another round of simplification uh, and tidied it up a little bit. Uh, and then remember, you also have a blank page of that that you can practice to make sure you know what goes in each cell. And then what we just did, tests by school of thought. Now, by the way, I have a much longer explanation of each, the test for each school of thought and the problems that you face on here. So, you know, if, if you want to go back and try to figure out what I was doing, I have a much longer explanation there. I then get to, oh, there's a summary page. Test summaries for exam, okay? And I'll go over this next time to make sure you understand it, but basically in those first four uh, up there, it's saying this is what you, this is what you ex uh, should expect in terms of the data for each theory. And then I have the test completed. And then... Again, I have a blank page. So that if you just want to practice, you can go through, and this is what I handed out just now, a blank page to make sure you know how everything works. Uh, and uh, we've got 
The exam's not till Halloween, so we've got a little while to go. So I can go over this in more detail next time. Otherwise, I'm going to waste your tuition dollar and let you go home now. Better study questions here? October 24th. One week ahead of Halloween. May the force be with you. And thank you, Dr. Fike, and good night. Turn this up now. I don't know.